8 a.m. I'm delighted to welcome into the studio this morning Peggy Dolgenos. Did I get that right? You did. Thank, Thank you. you so much. She is the chief executive of Cruise.io. We're going to talk this morning about net neutrality and other matters. But before we do that, I know the name of Cruise.io. And thank you for being here this morning. Oh, thank I you. know the name of Cruise.io. I know where your office is because I pass by it. But I don't know anything about it. And rather than me do the research, I thought, no, we have the chief <laughs> executive coming in. She can talk about it. If the company has actually been around a long time hasn't it yes for 28 years we were actually one of the first private internet service providers um, so we were one of the first companies in the whole country that uh, offered internet to just regular people you know on a retail basis before us it was mostly um, military and universities and uh, big corporations had internet so we were we were on the vanguard, and a lot of Santa Cruz was as well. We have Santa Cruz has a very uh, interesting and long history of being pioneers in technology, including the internet. And why Santa Cruz? What was the attraction there for for Cruz IO to to start here? Well, it's really interesting. Um, the way that Santa Cruz works is we have a lot of very highly technical people. Uh, you know, back this was back in the 1980s. There were people working in uh, all kinds of fields. You know, the uh, defense industry and the and uh, working at Lockheed and that kind of thing. But we also have this tremendous creative hippie culture uh, with the Grateful Dead and uh, you know tie dye and everything else. And so interestingly. The internet is uh, is kind of the child of those two things. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't it? Yeah. It it was a very interesting time, and there's uh, there are a lot of people in our area who were um, were there at kind of the beginnings of the internet uh, when it was not really formed yet. And um, there's some interesting stories. And were you with the company at that time at all? Yes. Are you I'm one of the founders? Yeah. So you wow, isn't that interesting that oh, yeah. we've gone from where we were to where we are today? It is, and I have to say that it's gone in some uh, unintended directions uh, especially in the last year or two uh, there you know we've had we've really uh, had our um, ideals uh, shattered at times uh, we kind of thought it was going to bring a sort of a Gaia you know world uh, consciousness uh, you know that kind of thing and that it would be but basically we thought it would be good for everyone because there would be so much more communication that we thought that was good and I still believe that but I but it has taken some turns that um, you know if everyone is if, if everyone is a publisher then how do we know which publisher to believe that's true mm -hmm. you um Cruzi has been working on fiber optic i don't know what fiber optic cable is or fiber optic internet can you explain it in such a way that that those of us even at the basis level would understand well maybe? absolutely it's kind of like a, a fiber optic network is kind of like the copper network that the phones are on you know your phone lines are made of copper and they uh go from the central office uh to your house so they either go on pole or under the street and so you already have a network that reaches your house and that's true of uh, every every building uh, pretty much in the county and the country um, but fiber optics is just kind of the next step up and when I say next step I mean next step way way up so uh, fiber is uh, glass it's actually spun glass and what they do is they they uh, take the glass and they stretch it out into long fibers, into long, long strings. And uh, it's uh, pure glass. And then they pass uh, light through it. That's how the data gets to you, is, uh, is as light, um, not as electricity as the copper um, infrastructure does. So it, is, it doesn't get hot. It isn't dangerous if you cut it. You know, you don't have to worry that uh, there's going to be a dangling line that you might touch by mistake. It's all uh, light going through it that's sent by lasers. So that's the underlying technology. Of course, you don't, just like with your phone, you don't have to know what that technology is. It's just kind of a cool technology, but um, you don't have to know what it is. But it just delivers data uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of times faster than your phone lines do. So if you go back to, you know, DSL or, uh, or even cable internet, those are going over copper and they can't carry nearly as much data as the glass does. Is the glass, can the glass be broken? Can it, is it brittle like glass no, glass that we would yeah, know? No, it can bend. It can actually bend about 90 degrees. I mean, you, you know, you can't, just like with, uh, 
when you have uh, cables attaching your computer to something, you don't want to take it and, and bend it really hard or something. That could hurt it. It's, it's like that. It's not, a, uh, it's not completely immune to being uh, broken or affected, but it's very uh, stable. That's what goes under the oceans. That's what our, uh, the transcontinental um, telephones have been, the transatlantic uh, yeah, uh, cables have been for a long time. It's been in use for a very long time. Oh, my sister's happy about that then, so I can call her every week. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, uh-huh. And now we're just using that in, uh, in more, you know, residential places. It used to be something that was really uh, used for high-tech, very high, high industrial things. And again, it's just bringing that kind of technology so we can all use it. And then we can have that much more Internet that um, we can have 3D Thanksgiving dinner with our relatives in, uh, who are far away or whatever's coming. We don't know what's coming, but, but we'll be ready for Isn't it. Isn't that exciting that we don't know what's coming, but we're ready for it? Well, when you think how things have changed in the last, you know, since Cruise Ass started 28 years ago, I mean, my goodness. And how much is over the Internet now that we didn't know? So Netflix is the big user right now. I think a lot of people know that. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, Netflix didn't exist in its current form. I don't even know how old it is for um, sending uh, data over the Internet, but maybe just five years or something. Really? That's, and how many people have access presently to your fiber optic systems? Well, right now the number of people is in the hundreds because we're just building our first all-fiber neighborhood. So right now we have fiber that goes to buildings around the county in different places, but it's it's kind of uh, just here and there. And we wanted to we want to reach everyone. We have customers all over the county. We want to reach all of them with the best internet we can. Fiber is the best. Uh, so we're doing our first fiber neighborhood in downtown Santa Cruz, but we intend to keep going. We're already we already have places around the county that have fiber besides downtown, and we intend to keep going. Fascinating. This is great. I love hearing about this, especially when I can understand it. And Peggy is going to stay with us. We're going to talk net neutrality coming up next, and we'll talk about the importance of it, what has been happening since that legislative ruling came down from the FCC. It's 43 past eight. Here's Rick with your KSEO King of the Hill traffic update. Northbound 1 stop and go between Freedom Boulevard and Soquel Drive. Highway 17 gets slow between the reservoir and again in Los Gatos. 101 Heavy in Morgan Hill and again from East Capitol up to 237. South 1 to Monterey, West 68, both at the limit. Will be mostly cloudy today. Highs in the low and mid 60s. A little bit more sun tomorrow and then more clouds and a likelihood of some rain on both Thursday and Friday. Not steady, just hit and miss showers. We'll dry on Saturday and then we will get some pretty good rainfall Sunday night into Monday. Healthcare costs are on the rise at Watsonville Community Hospital. They say the reasons are complicated, but it's easy to understand when someone is being greedy. The Tennessee Corporation that owns Watsonville Community Hospital has been charging us about double the price as Dominican Hospital in Santa Cruz. Double the price for the same treatment? That's just greedy. Our hospital should care more about our families than sending profits back to Tennessee. That's why we started Keep Watsonville Healthy, a coalition of healthcare providers and community leaders that believe healthcare costs should be fair in Watsonville. Watsonville Community Hospital should care more about taking care of our families, not about sending more profits back to Tennessee. Let's make healthcare costs fair at Watsonville Community Hospital. Sign the petition at keepwatsonvillehealthy.info. That's keepwatsonvillehealthy.info. Paid for by Service Employees International Union, United Healthcare Workers, West Political Issues Committee. Every Saturday from 12 noon to 1 o'clock on KSCO, it's Perspectives with Dr. David Biles. Perspectives covers a number of topics, including holistic health, vaccinations, and government waste. Don't miss the next exciting Perspectives program here on AM 1080 KSCO. Every Saturday from 12 noon to 1, right here. So, Rosie, if you go to Cruise IO's website, you will see a blog entry from late November of last year. And unlike every other ISP, it seems, in the nation, Cruise IO actually supported net neutrality. Yes. Which is... Well, you just got to look at your colleagues in the industry. Uh, unique. 
Well, it's not entirely unique. That it, I think the big ISPs, uh, the ones that have a monopoly or duopoly control over um, Internet service in a lot of the United States, of course they're in favor of... Uh, of repealing net neutrality and kind of making it a wild west situation because they they have a lot of sway. Smaller ISPs like Cruzeo a lot of times recognize that we're not, uh, you know, it doesn't benefit us to try to gain a monopoly or try to uh, squeeze uh, content corporations for uh, for uh, fees. We're, you know, it's in our interest to support our community, and that means a lot of smaller businesses as well as as big businesses. We have uh, Peggy uh, Dolganos, who is the um, chief executive of Cruz.io local company here in Santa Cruz. So why did do uh, I've had this discussion with people out of the station, and a lot of people seem to believe, Peggy, that the vote came down from the FCC because of financial support during the election. Well, that's very likely. I mean, it's not just during the election. It's uh, very large companies have a lot of lobbying cash. And uh, if you look at the list of top lobbyists in Washington and in Sacramento, uh, you'll see the uh, big telecom companies um, such as Comcast, AT&T, Verizon. They're all in the very top of the list. There's a lot of money involved, and there's also a lot of really smart people providing what I believe is political cover for uh, for just being able to make more money. I mean, that's that's what their job is. That's that's their, that you know, that's that's their uh, their charter. So in a way, you can't blame them for trying to just make a lot more money. But our political system lets that be very influential past what it really should be for the good of the people. So net neutrality was um, was knocked down by the FCC. But I see that there is a resurgence of interest by politicians in reversing that. Well, yes, and it, because it's an FCC ruling, the, um, if uh, Congress uh, votes to overturn it, uh, then they can do so, I think it's within 60 days of uh, the effectiveness of the rule, uh, they can overturn it. But it's, it's a high bar. There are already 50 senators who've said uh, that they are going to vote to overturn the, uh, the ruling. Um, Susan Collins just joined the Democrats, and they, that made 50. But uh, but they still need at least one more senator, and then they also have to get the House to vote uh, for to overturn the ruling, and then the president has to sign it. So it is a high bar. The only way to get that done is for there to be really a lot of popular support uh, to overturn, and uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of support. Uh, and we just need to push as hard as we can. There were a lot of petitions online that I saw on social media where folks are saying, just sign up, sign up. You'd... But and then people were nervous. Well, what's net... what does that mean? So let's, let's explain that. If you would, please explain to the listener what, is, in simple terms, what is net neutrality? Well, net neutrality is uh, because we're working with what we call a common carrier. We're just working with a transport system. It's like a road or like a telephone. And you really don't want to say that some people who are using that road or the telephone, not based on uh, anything that, not based on anything that's different about uh, the thing they're sending, but only based on the content of that they're sending. You shouldn't allow some people to have uh, faster transport than others. The the thing is that there is a, kind of a limited amount of bandwidth because of our infrastructure. Um, there's a limited amount of bandwidth that you can send from one place to another until you build more, and building more is expensive. So when they say, oh, some things will get speeded up, the fact is that means that other things will get speeded will get slowed down so some a lot of websites if they don't pay the bigger uh, telecom corporations for fast service they will be slowed down and what that means is that when people ask to are at home and they ask to see something on their computer they want to look at a website or something like that uh, some of the websites uh, some of the services that are online will come to them very quickly and easily and others they're just going to sit there and then the the little um the little uh, waiting uh, circle that will be really, going. That, that you want going. to punch sometimes, yes. Well, how long do you wait when you see that, when you see that uh, pause? How long do you wait for the website to load? So what happens there is that the larger companies who pay the big telecom companies 
will be um, in much, much better position to uh, sell their services. That's one of the big disconnects, I think, a lot of people who know what they're talking about, you and people like me and Rosie who don't. We think of Internet as being endless, infinite, when in fact it still has to fit more or less in a pipe somewhere. It's not infinite. The broadband. That's right, and the fact is that we need a lot more Internet. I mean, we were just talking about how Cruzeo is making a huge investment in Santa Cruz County to uh, to build uh, fiber optic Internet, which would give us a, a lot more uh, capacity. Um, but if, if a company is getting paid for speeding up, uh, why would they be interested in building more capacity? If you have a scarce resource, wouldn't you just charge more for it and that gives you uh that gives you the ability to charge more for it so to me it seems like the the idea uh, that you would allow uh, uh telecommunications companies to uh charge people to charge companies for their uh for transit data transit is discouraging people uh companies from building more infrastructure that we badly need yeah, that's very unfortunate. It really is unfortunate, I have to say. Well, it's just not, I think it's kind of thoughtless. It's uh, it's kind of short-term thinking, but it just doesn't make sense to me that, that, that they would be trying to uh, build up the Internet that we need by giving this uh, these incentives that w- would go the other way. Yeah. Okay. Um, And so do you think that there's a chance, do you think percentage-wise there's a chance that we would be able to to overturn this? What what, what are your thoughts? I am sorry to say I think it's kind of unlikely, um, but but the last time uh, that there was the big net neutrality brouhaha under Obama, um, we did turn it around. So... I have to say the chances aren't great, but it could happen, and I think people should be interested in it. I mean, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of issues on our mind these days. Uh, I think all of us do. There are a lot of important things happening uh, in our country, and so it's hard to have one more issue that we get on top of and go march about or send letters or call uh, our uh, representatives about. But this one. Is it's a carrier for all the other issues that we care about. You know, if you can't get your word out, if you can't get the information that you need or send the information that you need, there are a lot of other issues that are affected. You are, you've been in this business for almost 30 years. You're the chief executive of a very successful um, local business that provides a much needed service. Women in high tech, women, we're hearing about the the separation of salaries of the possibilities of promotion i wanted to get some of your thoughts on that i say that because it, the march the women's march i know is coming up this weekend it'll be big in santa cruz as it was last year but i wonder what are your thoughts on the glass ceiling and this sort of thing you've obviously pushed through this from the get-go to now well, we have our own business. My husband and I have our own business that we started, so there was no ceiling uh, for us except, uh, oh, you, you know. Oh, you, star- you actually formed the company? Yes. Okay, excuse yeah, me. We yeah. started the company in uh, 1989. So, um, but uh, I think that it's very real, the, the uh, problems for women getting ahead in technology. I mean, obviously, they're there, and uh, they start just very early. I would say they start in uh, probably elementary school with uh, women just thinking, girls just thinking that they can't, for example, do math. Whereas, as we know, uh, anybody can do math. Math is actually kind of fun. And uh, I think a lot of us, when we're, when we're girls, we're sort of discouraged from that and discouraged from competing in that arena. And then it just uh, lasts through till college and, and onward. It's very unfortunate. Do you think that that is something that will turn around? I think in the long run, I think in the long run uh, it will, because just like the medical field, or um, I think there's women in in all kinds of fields, law that that we didn't used to do, um, computer programming. It's just uh, languages, and uh, women do certainly do well in languages. Um, so I think I think it will change, but I think just the the culture is still uh, pretty male. Um, you know, we see what's going on in with Google and and the lawsuit about the um, about the discrimination. That's right. So uh, I think there is kind of a 
you know, in, in a young industry, uh, this particular one anyway, there's there is a kind of a of a macho thing that's happening and how fun it is to to be macho and everything. And sometimes I think sometimes things get that way, you know, like a sport or something. But I think it'll over time it'll change because women are very skilled and talented and uh you know, we always, sooner or later, we always uh, rise to the occasion. Exactly. Well, we vote now after having not been, in a, being allowed to for such a long time. Mm-hmm. How many employees do you have, Peggy? I think right now we've got 32 employees. They're all local. They're, they're all from Santa Cruz. So you don't have anyone commuting in the opposite direction from the commute? Uh, no. Well, actually, we do have one person who lives over the hill um, who do, who works for us um, to, with, on our mountain sites, actually. But other than that, yeah, we're all – yeah, um, the nice thing is, you know, what we wanted to do uh, among our many goals was to uh, stop people from having to commute over the hill. So, uh, so our company itself, you know, we have people bicycle and walk to work as, as much as we can. And then uh, we also have a co-working facility and uh, – and people can use our service to telecommute. So we're trying to do good. It sounds to me like you're doing great. And this, oh, thank you. the fiber optic thing is very exciting. It's super exciting and super challenging and a big risk for us. You know, we're going up against some of the biggest companies in the country. Uh, and they have definitely not... Uh, not let us have it easy. I, I you know, ever since we announced, um, I think it was about two years ago, that we were going to build a competitive fiber optic network. And remember, our industry is supposed to be competitive. It's deregulated. Sure. It's That means there's supposed to be competition. The only way for us to get uh, innovation, good service, and low prices, as, you know, all of us capitalists know, is uh, to uh, to have competition, but the minute that we uh, that we announced that we were going to be building our fiber optic network, um, we immediately got a lot of attention from uh, you know the bigger corporations that had been ignoring our area. So that's great for um, that's great for consumers in our area, uh, but it is a challenge for us. Very nice to have you in the studio. We won't let it be another 28 years, I promise. Oh yeah. I'll have thanks. you come in sooner than that, Peggy. Uh, uh, dul, dul, Dulgenous. Dulgenous. Thank That's you.